Moscow's denials to accusations that its forces tortured and killed civilians in the Ukrainian town of Bucha have been undermined by newly released satellite images, which appear to show bodies lying in the streets before Russian troops withdrew. Moscow says Ukraine has fabricated evidence with the help of Western nations. Ukraine's President Zelensky has accused the Russian forces of committing genocide and is expected to address the UN Security Council on Tuesday. President Biden called Vladimir Putin a war criminal, saying the Russian leader should be put on trial. Our correspondent Yugita Lamai was one of the journalists who travelled to Bucha with President Zelensky and a warning her report contains some distressing images. The place where Ukraine's pushback against Russia is most clearly visible. This street in the town of Bucha, just outside of Kyiv, lined with blown up tanks and armored vehicles. Today, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky visited the town, drawing attention to the brutality that unfolded here. I believe these are definitely war crimes. I believe it's genocide in its purest sense, because children have been killed, women have been raped and civilians executed, he said. Through the day, we saw evidence of deliberate murders. In the village of Motijin, a shallow grave found in the woods. Four bodies could be seen half buried, but officials told us there could be more. 51-year-old Olha Sohenko, her husband Igor, and her son Alexander, who was 25. She was the head of the village. They lived in this house. Officials believe they were killed by Russian soldiers for helping Ukraine's army. In Bucha, in the basement of a building, we saw the bodies of five men, hands tied behind their backs. Some shot in the head, others in the chest. Pictures too ghastly to show. Prost. Vlad was helping gather the bodies being found. People have been shot in the head by Russian snipers. People on bicycles, people delivering potatoes. I can tell you so many stories, but I don't want to. I want to forget them. These men are still to be identified. The mayor says more than 300 have been killed. We are still discovering dead bodies here in Bucha, the horror of what unfolded coming to light now. But there are still areas of this country under Russian control and no one quite knows what's going on there. Is it still possible to talk peace with Russia? We asked President Zelensky. Ukraine deserves peace. We can't live with war. Every day our army is fighting, but we don't want the lives of millions to be lost, he said. That's why dialogue is necessary. Yogi Dalmay, BBC News, Bucha. Well, making any allegation of war crimes against Russia stick in a court of law is an enormous challenge. Let's discuss this with Dr. Maria Varaki, who's co-director of the War Crimes uh, Research Group. Uh, thank you so much for, for speaking to us. So that is the challenge, isn't it? President Biden is saying President Putin needs to stand trial for war crimes, but how? Good morning. Yes, unfortunately, the horrific images, satellite and photographic images we have the last three days, you know, coming from Ukraine have shocked everyone. But as you said before, it's a very challenging task, you know, to investigate and collect evidence of uh, possible uh, war crimes that may have been committed on the ground on the territory of Ukraine. However, having said that, there is a coordinated effort and there is a political will to collect and preserve this evidence. It's not only the Ukrainians on the ground, there are other countries that have expressed their technical and financial support for the collection of evidence together with the European Union and, of course, the International Criminal Court. But, but even with the collection of evidence, the case put together, you know, independently and verified, uh, the likelihood of seeing President Putin in an international court uh, facing accusations. How likely is that? 
Well, it's not a result that we're going to see in the immediate future. However, it's not an unlikely scenario. We have seen other political leaders, other head of states, who at the end of the day, they just ended up before international criminal tribunals, such as President Milosevic. However, we have to be very clear and very honest that trying to collect and to prove this evidence directly with a, with a, with a head of state, with a political leader, it is a very challenging task. But I trust it's a very it's very difficult, you know, to prove this direct connection of uh, direct orders uh, or other type of involvement of criminal involvement within the commission of those crimes. However, I trust that the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court and all the other investigative teams, uh, they they conduct a very effective and I would say independent investigation to collect that kind of evidence. And, and yet, for the people of Ukraine, the requirement for justice is probably one of the most important, isn't it, for any it kind of progress in this situation going forward? It is, it is very important that uh, those crimes will not remain unpunished, that the relatives of the big victims will find truth about the whereabouts of their loved ones. It is very important to have this acknowledgement of those atrocities. However, as I said before, we have to be very clear that international criminal justice is a slow project, is a slow process. And we won't have results in the immediate future. However, we will have re results later. Uh, President Zelensky will be addressing the UN Security Council uh, tomorrow. Um, he's calling this genocide. He's been very clear for a long time that there has to be international action. There has to be justice with regards to what's happening. Well, uh, yes, I heard him saying that this is genocide and other political leaders. However, being a lawyer myself, we have to be very, very careful with the invocation of the crime of genocide. I understand the, the symbolic and emotional implications of invoking that this is a crime of genocide. However, for this crime to be proved, we need to have a particular intent, the genocidal intent. And this is very difficult to be proved that there was a genocidal intent intent. So I would say that for the time being, what is investigated is war crimes and crimes against humanity. Dr. Maria Varaki, thank you so much for sharing your expertise, co-director of the War Crimes Research Group.